Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Classroom Champions Live. Um, we have a very special treat for all of you today. I have two of my favorite people joining us on Classroom Champions Live today. Um, the first person we have with us is Jane Chanel. Jane is an Olympian in the sport of skeleton. Jane will tell us all about that in just a minute. She is also recently a world championship silver medalist. So welcome, Jane. Hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and then we also have Todd Nesloni, you guys. Todd is amazing. He is an educator, author, speaker. He is the director of culture and strategic leadership at TEPSA, and he is also a part of the White House Champions of Change. So welcome, Todd. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, of course. Thank you all for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. All right, so let's dive in. So first of all, just a quick reminder that if you guys have questions for Jane and Todd along the way, you can put them in the comments and we will be sure to answer your questions, say hello to you, good morning. Thanks so much for being here. I wanna give a couple shout outs because we're gonna do kind of a recap of the week right now. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back through all of the subjects we had throughout the week. We're gonna ask Jane questions about all of this stuff and we're gonna go from there. So um, I wanna give a shout out first to the Krauss family and the Hildreth family for tuning in to watch Paralympian Emily Young and the awesome teachers Lori and Rebecca for being inspired with their healthy living goals this week. I wanna give a big shout out um, to Zachary and his family for making fruit kebabs on pretzel sticks, which were inspired by Bob Sledders, Tiffany and aerialist um, Winter Vinecki. And I also want to give a shout out to Xavier and his family for working on their postcard challenge from Olympian Jen Lalonde. Um, on Thursday, Heather and Cassidy Williams for joining us in movement with many time world, na world champion and uh, national champion and Olympic gold medalist, Keegan Randall. So um, thanks you guys for tuning in and continue to tune in throughout this session. And um, let's see, Jane. I would love to talk to you a little bit about your sport because I bet we have a couple of people at home who have not seen skeleton before. So can you tell us a little bit about skeleton, what your sport is and why you love it? For sure. So essentially we are the crazy ones that go head first on down the bobsled track on a sled, but it's pretty much just like a glorified cookie sheet. So we sprint at the start. We have lots of training with that. And then when we jump on our sleds, we have to slide down and navigate these giant ice slides where um, certain tracks like in Whistler, we get going up to and over 140 kilometers an hour. So um, it's uh, it's pretty fast. It's a ton of fun. And for anyone out there who has gone tobogganing um, down those snowy slopes in the wintertime, uh, that's pretty much where I started. So um, I've been sliding for nine years now and I'm uh, Whistler is my home track. And um, I've been to most of the tracks in the world that are still open. And um, but Whistler is by far my most favorite track because of how fast we get going. So, yeah, it's, it's a, cool. a, everyone's bucket list. <laughs> totally. Well, I love sledding. Did you like sledding when you were a kid? I did. I, I loved it. We were always out in the backyard with our crazy carpets, uh, trying to get as much speed as we could. And we would make jumps and try and get airtime and stuff. And um, I, I, yeah, I, th <laughs> I think anybody um, that knows what I'm talking about with the crazy carpets and the jumps that you'd make would would have a blast with skeleton <laughs> nice awesome well i'm gonna leave it to you guys i'll give um one quick shout out before i leave you two um uh katherine pearson jane who is in your lap <laughs> well i thought i would share with you all um this is twiggy she is a oh no she is a hairless cat she is my my pet here in, at home, and um, she's my my biggest fan. You can quite say, um, but yeah, I thought I'd share you all with her. She's getting a little squirmy, so I'm gonna let her go. But uh, yeah, let's show you my cat. Ah, <laughs> uh, thanks for sharing Twiggy with us, Jane. Um, one other thing, you guys, is that Jane is one of our regular mentors with Classroom Champions. So thank you so much, Jane. Jane is mentoring kids across Canada. And um, you, you guys can learn a lot more and find all of our downloads at teach.classroomchampions.org. So you can watch videos um, of athletes like Jane uh, teaching lessons and all sorts of things like goal setting and perseverance. And um, you can find fun activities there as well. But 
Um, Todd, I think you have a couple questions for Jane, right? Yeah. Well, first of all, I got to say, Jane, after watching that video, I saw Catherine Whitman also put in here that Zachary wants to know if you ever get scared. I'm watching that video and I'm like terrified and it's a recorded video. I mean, do you <laughs> get like, have you ever been scared? Because that's so fast. I do get scared. So do you guys know on like a hockey rink when they like freshly clean the ice with the Zamboni and it's got that glaze on it? Um, well, skeleton, we have to kind of take care of the ice the exact same way, but we don't have a Zamboni. We have humans that go down and spray the ice with houses and scrape it and everything like that. But when you're standing at the top of the track and you can see the reflection of the sky in the ice, that's when I get scared because I know it's going to be a super fast day and it's just, it's, oh, it gives me on edge. It gets me so excited, but I love adrenaline. So I think that might be half the problem with me. <laughs> Hey, well, well, that's a great problem to have, but I, I just, I, I can't even imagine jumping on a sled like that, but we will jump into some questions now. So, you know, on Monday at Classroom Champions, they, Emily led, Emily Young led us all in a workout and it was great. There were great different strategies to use and we were all getting our hearts pumping. Is there a favorite exercise that you like to do when you wake up? I do. So when I first wake up in the morning, here, I'll, I'll run you guys through it. We're going to do a quick little five minutes. Of oh, here we go. If you guys all want to stand up with me, maybe you can see me here. So put your hair back, get ready to go. So in the mornings when I get going, you know when you're in bed and you're sleepy and you're kind of like, ugh, do I have to get up? So when I'm in bed, I just like to lie there, stretch everything out, tense every muscle in my body, ugh, and then it helps wake everything up, I find. So that's really good. That's the first thing I do. And then see if I can show you guys what I'm going to do next. So with uh, skeleton, because you guys saw at the start, we run at the start. So um, what I like to do when we're warming up for races and everything is I'll go for a quick jog, just a quick jog around, get my legs going, and then we'll do some stretching. So if you guys want to join me in this morning stretch, it could be pretty, pretty fun. Um, so for us, you know, we're bent over all the time when we're running with our sleds. So we need to make sure our backs and our hamstrings, our whole back chain mechanics are nice and stretched out. So you're going to put one, I'm going to stand, you're going to put one leg in front, you're going to bend down and reach your toe. Today's actually a good day. I can actually reach my toe, which is not the usual. So that's good. Can anyone else out there reach their toes when you're stretching? Because <laughs> I usually can't. Okay. And we're going to switch legs to the other side. Oh, I can reach my toes on this side too. This is, you guys, this is a first. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, sweet. And then when we're going to stretch out our quads in the front, so you can hold something if you want. Stretch out this big muscle on the front of your leg. Get that going. You're going to get the other side. Hold something because my balance is awful. Great. And then usually what I like to do next, actually, is a bit of some activation work. So, um, what you can do at home is you guys all have backpacks at home, right? So if you want, if this is too easy for you, you need to make it more difficult. Put all of your heavy textbooks into your backpack. So you're wearing your backpack and you're going to squat down and you're going to do about 10, squ 10 squats. And then if that's too easy, what I like to do, because we have to be super explosive at the start of our races, is um, I usually do a bunch of jumps. So with your backpack on, if you might want to make it a little bit lighter for this, um, but you're going to have your backpack on, you're going to keep your back nice and straight when you go down and you're going to jump as high as you can. And you do three of those and in a row. Okay. So it's going to be like this, like up, up, up. Okay. So as soon as you hit the ground, you're going to go right back up. Oh my gosh. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> 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 it's getting warm in here um so yeah anyway that's kind of a bit of a an easy get your blood pumping in the morning kind of warm up a little workout that i i like to do before i race before i slide um i love that well you know we, we had somebody ask when you do your stretches do you usually wear shoes or do you stretch out with bare feet um it depends where i am i am a i really don't like if I'm inside, I really don't like wearing socks um, or shoes. <laughs> That's just my personal preference. But if I'm outside um, running around or 
I guess just out, outside because we do winter sport. It's usually icy and snowy That's out. Great. Then I'll for sure be wearing shoes. So um, it just kind of depends where I am. Where, well, uh, bravo to being able to reach your toes. I know that I cannot either, but I see Olivia and Leo commented on here that they can touch their toes too. So bravo, Jane, for being able to do that today. <laughs> so then when you were a kid, what was your favorite way to stay active? My favorite way was to actually, um, I remember with my sister and my brother growing up, we would always try and play tag, but we would, like, you guys all know, the ground is lava. That whole thing has come back. So <laughs> we would actually run around and jump on the couches and throw couch cushions on the ground to avoid the lava. So mm -hmm. um, that's what we would do is we would play that for hours. And I'm sure my parents thought we were nuts and crazy, but it was so much fun. We stayed active and we were, especially right now we were inside um, and it's important to stay inside with everything that is going on right now. So that could be something that you guys could do to stay active and keep that healthy lifestyle. Um, that's super important. It helps with your mood. It helps with um, staying healthy and keeping your blood moving and pumping and stuff. So um, anything you can do inside right now is super important. So I love that you share that one because that's the same game my brother and I would play. All, I mean, I think all of us grew up at some point. <laughs> Either that playing the ground is lava or don't step on the cracks when you're oh walking gosh, down right? like those, <laughs> two, those are always really active ones. Well, you know, Jane, <laughs> then we think about, you know, that was Monday. Monday was all about movement. And then when we've got Tuesday coming up on Classroom Champions, we talked about having a tasty Tuesday. And Tiffany and Winter taught us how to cook breakfast burritos. And it oh was God. Amazing. Like my mouth was salivating just watching and listening <laughs> to everything they were saying. And so when you are at home, what's a healthy snack that you like to make? Well, let me tell you, I actually have it right beside me. Hey, there um, we go. <laughs> what I love, so this is cooking with Jane. <laughs> <laughs> cooking with Jane rather, is um I'll slice up an apple. So mm -hmm. it's just like any kind of apple I've got. And then um I've got cinnamon and I'll just sprinkle. Sprinkle a little bit. Oops, that was a lot. Sprinkle a little bit on top, and um, the sweetness. You don't need to add any sugar or anything like that. But the sweetness of the apple will and the cinnamon work so well together, and it's super healthy. And I would definitely recommend if you guys are looking for an easy, quick snack. There we go. And so those of you listening, we'd love to hear in the comments, like, what are some of your favorite snacks that you're snacking on while we continue to talk about this? Because we'd love to share them, and maybe we can all find a snack we all enjoy. Now, of course. You know, we asked about a healthy snack that you have at home, but there's always, you know, a little unhealthy that we have popping into. What's something that's not really super healthy, but that you love to snack on too? Um, well, I'm a big texture person. So anything with the crunch, with mm -hmm. the crunchy texture, I love. So if you give me a bag of chips, oh goodness, or yes. a can of Pringles, I can't eat just one. So <laughs> it's... Yep. I love chips and um, I try not to keep them around the house too much, but, um, or I have to hide the bags, but um, that's definitely my, my favorite, not so good snack around the house. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a big Cheez-Its fan. Like I like the mm -hmm. extra toasty ones. I could snack on those all day long. And I see that Charlotte listening in loves fresh apples too. Yes. So Charlotte, maybe you can try it with some cinnamon on it and mix it up. I had some apples the other day and we uh, drizzled honey on it. I've never done that mm -hmm. before. And that was really good too. And I see that Leo is eating granola bars. So yeah. we love eating those snacks. So when growing up as a kid though, did you have a favorite vegetable that you liked? Ooh, I mean, I actually loved, I still love uh, cucumbers. Oh. I think the, the freshness of them and like, again, that crunch factor when you get a good one. So um, I'm actually, when we're away on tour in the season and stuff, um, sometimes we don't get as much vegetables or greens that we need when we're at wherever we're staying. So we'll go to the grocery stores and I'm known to just kind of sit there with a whole cucumber and just eat the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, cucumbers and peppers, are, like the big bell peppers, I'll eat those like apples sometimes too. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've never done that. That's, that's just, I don't know. I'd. I, I, I can understand the cucumber thing, but I, I, I could see my wife eating a bell pepper like that because she loves <laughs> putting bell peppers in the stuff. So, so you know, 
then we're thinking about, you know, Tuesday was Tasty Tuesday. So we, we've talked about our food and our snacks. We see that some people listening in. Griffin likes pickles. Uh, Ashley's mm -hmm. kids love fruit smoothies. Olivia loves cucumbers. And Xavier shared ants on a log. I totally remember Ooh. growing up with those as well. So I know I like Xavier's not talking about real ants, or I'm thinking he's not talking about real ants. <laughs> uh, because we, we did it, but we didn't use real ants. But, you know, Wednesday was Wisdom Wednesday. And we talked about, you know, staying connected to people, even though we're not able to see them. And Jen Lalon talked about how to make postcards because, you know, that's often a forgotten art in our world full of technology is actually writing and, and making a postcard. And so how are you staying connected with the people that you love? Um, I think right now, just with the the time and age and with everything that's going on too, um, I'm actually using technology a lot right now, but I I love receiving mail. Mm -hmm. And um, in the previous years with my classes with classroom champions, I would send them um, postcards actually from wherever I was. I would try to, so they'd get postcards from Latvia, Germany, and all those other places oh, that wow. we get to go to. But um, right now, um, just with everyone trying to limit the amount of uh, outside time and exposure mm -hmm. to other people, um, I think we really have to fall on technology. So um, just the these chats that we're having right now with each other, we're staying connected this way. Um, any kind of video calling with your friends, your family, your your classmates um, is always a really good and fun way to stay in touch. So I love that. Those are great ideas. Now I know Emily. I know you're still listening in. You made a postcard, didn't you, Emily? I think we'd love Ooh. to see the postcard that you made. There it is. Ah. So where, where, where'd that idea come from, Emily? Well, so I live in the mountains here and um, I love the mountains. It's my happy place. So I have, um, I have friends all over the world as well. Like Jane, when I was an athlete, it was so fun to connect with people in different countries and China and Australia and Germany. Um, I know we've got some people in Germany watching today. So, you know, for me to stay connected is so important as well. So this one is going to my best friends who are in Denver. And uh, I'll send this out today. That's awesome. I love it. Well, I also love in the comments, I think somebody had a great idea. Aaron Hildreth shared that they like to play Guess That Veggie, where they put a blindfold on and then eat vegetable and they try to guess what it is. That sounds so fun. Have you ever done anything like that, Jane? No, I haven't, but I want to now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'll, I'll maybe see because I'm back home with my mom and dad. Maybe I'll like make them play with me make them play that game with me later. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm thinking like, but with my family, you know, I've got to make sure it's the person I trust who's giving yes. me things to try. <laughs> for sure. Well, you know, then we talked about Wisdom Wednesday. Now moving into Thursday, we had Creative Kids Thursday. And Keegan went and led us in 10 minutes of the Winter Olympics, where he took us through all the movements that were like in their own Olympic games. And they talked about some of the things that they learned through being an athlete. And so when you're thinking about, you know, all of your experiences, what is one of the biggest things you think you learned by being an Olympic athlete? Um, I think knowing and um, being able to trust myself and have the confidence in myself that everything I've done up until that point to get me there mm -hmm. was enough and that it didn't matter of the outcome or the results um, that my friends, my family, my country, um, people I don't even know that they're gonna love and be proud of me regardless of the outcome of how I did. So um, it was incredible and it's something um, something to be a part of something bigger than ourselves um to have the opportunity doesn't come around very often right. but we actually have that opportunity right now as a whole as a whole collective world if we can all come together and if we can all protect each other and protect ourselves by following the guidelines that have been put out with social distancing right. um and really try and um stay to ourselves right now so that we can not only protect ourselves but protect those that are a bit more vulnerable than us. So um, being able to be a part of this whole historic moment, this event that that's unfortunately come around is is really important and is actually um, a, a big a big moment and a big thing for everybody right now. 
Well, you know, and Jane, that leads perfectly into my next question is, you know, um, we throughout this week, we've talked about being adaptable and changing to uncertain situations. You know, all of us are facing something that we've never had to experience before of all the closures and all the uncertainty and things like that. And so tell me a little bit about how you are managing during this time. Um, right now, my, well, for me, my family is always number one. And so it was really important for me to get out to Vancouver because I currently live in Calgary. So it was really important for me to get out to the rest of my family mm -hmm. um, and to help them out where, where and when I can. And so, um, I'm here. I know they're safe. They know I'm safe because I'm right. closer to home. Um, my parents fall within that vulnerable mm -hmm. category. So I've been doing all of the, the grocery shopping and um, going out and doing all the errands that I can mm -hmm. um, to help them out. Um, and so it's just a matter of kind of accepting everything is the, what it is and just moving with the flow of it because there's nothing more that we can do at the time. Right. The moment. <laughs> Well, you know, and that's great, Jane, for the kids to hear is that, you know, we can't, we just have to accept what's here and make the best of it. Mm -hmm. And so when we've got kids listening right now, you know, what is a really specific thing you would tell them you would want them to hear while they're listening right now? Um, I think right now, just with, with the uncertainty of everything that's going on, um, I think we have to all just play play everything safe right now and really, really try and keep that social distance between ourselves and our friends. And I know how difficult that can be um, because you're home from school and you're kind of bored. You want to go play with your friends. But right now, um, I think it's really important just to, to try and stay at home and to keep that distance and to just really find those different ways that we can connect with our friends, um, like our video calls and stuff like that. Um, and just try and keep everybody as safe as we can. I love that. Well, you know, can, is there something really fun or funny that you've seen people be doing online to pass the time in their homes? <laughs> I have. There's been, um, with with all of the, the, um, the recreation facilities, like the swimming and the gyms and, um, everything that's kind of closed right now, you see the, <laughs> there was one video I saw earlier today of someone who was a swimmer who was practicing their, their swimming, but on a, lying on a skateboard. So they were um, swimming just in circles in their kitchen on, on a skateboard. Or um, I saw another video, I think it was someone in Italy that had run, they ran a full marathon just by yes. running forth on their balcony. So I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's ways that we can all be creative while still being active and maintaining that healthy lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, we, we can't make any excuses. When a, when a guy can run a marathon on his balcony, <laughs> we have no excuses for not getting up and being active. Exactly, well, yeah. You know, so my last question for you is, you know, it's our, our flashback Friday question. What is the most mm -hmm. interesting challenge that you've overcome in either your sporting career or life in general? Oh man, the most interesting challenge. Um, who here has, well, first of all, who's seen Shrek and who knows that ogres are like onions and have all these layers? I, I feel like I'm an ogre. I have a lot of layers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I think um, a lot was it last year. So at World, Champion, World Championships for us was going to be held at Whistler. And Whistler is my home track. And I had not, I did not have a good year at all. And um, I was actually cut from the world championship team last year. And so um, it made me self reflect and uh, kind of look at the situation from an outside perspective to see how I wanted to approach this next season, if I wanted to approach this next season, um, and everything that came along with all of those questions of self-doubt. But I knew that through um, the perseverance and having you guys, the classroom champions, in my back pocket, encouraging me to be the best that I could be, and um, knowing that uh, it was just a bump in the road, and knowing that just because I didn't reach that goal, doesn't mean that I should stop or that I should quit. And it was a matter of kind of settling back, refocusing and resetting my goals um, to, to, to figure out what I wanted to do. And so this year um, I did decide to keep sliding, which was amazing. Um, and 
I changed equipment. We had a new coach and stuff. So just having all of these different pieces um, this season was difficult. But then at World Championships, everything came together. And so I was able to perform. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but at World Championships, I actually got a silver medal um, in a team event with my, my teammate. And I had the fastest downtime in that event. And um, it was just, this is just kind of like the, the icing on the cake for all of the trials and tribulations, but knowing and persevering through everything that everything does work out in the end. And even though it might not be the path that you want to go to get there, but if you trust the process, you will get there. And I think that's so important for our kids to hear and the adults that even even really successful athletes like yourself, it doesn't always work the way you have planned out. And when it doesn't work, you have to make a decision like, am I going to give up and walk away or am I going to keep persevering and pushing through? And when you do, sometimes it can be even more beautiful in the end, just like with that medal. So thank you so much, Jane, for sharing that. Now, I think you have a challenge for us to close out today, don't you? I do. I definitely do. Okay. So for you guys, I've, I've answered some really great questions today, um, but I want to hear more questions from you guys. So send them on over, write them down in, in the comment section, and I'm going to log on later and I'm going to go through and answer all of them. So if you have any questions for me, make sure you write them down and I'll be getting back to you. Okay. Sounds great. Emily, you got something else for us? All right. No, just thank you so much, you guys. This was so much fun. I loved having you on today. Um, again, just a reminder that if you want more activities, more um, athlete videos, more Q&As with athletes, you can find them all at teach.classroomchampions.org. So thank you guys so much. Um, loved having you. And uh, we'll see you again back here soon. Um, on Monday, everybody at home, we have um, Scott Tupper doing Movement Monday with us on Monday. So Tune back in and uh, thank you so much, Todd and Jane, for being with us today. Thank you, thank you guys. Bye, Bye. guys.